in the church here live, we've just read 1 Corinthians 6. You were out there in the Facebook audience. Some of you watch live now and some of you tune in later. Um, the great chapter is the New Testament reading for today. Uh, we read through the Bible as a church family together. It just takes 80 hours to read the Bible. You say, that's a long time. But if you divide 80 hours by 365 days, you just come out to 14 minutes a day. That's doable, isn't it? 14 minutes a day is doable. We just got to do it every day. I print these blue Bible reading charts by the thousands. I have them for you that are here in church today. I have them on the back table. Take one with you. Psalms 120 to 123 are the Old Testament today. And the New Testament is 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's, uh, let's go on now and, and take a look at this. It starts out in verse 1. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. Now what it's saying here is Christians ought not to sue each other in court. Christians ought to bring their, uh, if you're from our church or whatever church, everybody ought to have a church. Every Christian ought to have a church home. We live in the uh, day and age of, of, uh, of TV churches. There ain't no such thing as a TV church. Uh, I see some of them, they advertise now. Uh, uh, let me just think of one that's on there. Uh, Jimmy Swagger. Jimmy Swagger uh, says he's got a TV church. Now, he does have a congregation, and uh, I think, how many of you ever seen lately, you've seen Jimmy Swagger on the TV? Is anybody here, you've seen him lately? Now, uh, uh, he used to be, <clears throat> Jimmy Swagger used to be really big potatoes on the TV. I mean, he was the number one preacher on TV until he started, uh, got caught frequenting uh, a motel uh, with illicit sexual activity. Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. I hope, Jimmy, if you're listening, I hope he repented. I think he has. Uh, he's, he's, uh, Jimmy Swaggart is nothing what he used to be on television. Although I'll say this, uh, he can really play the piano and he can sing. He's a good singer. I think he has some good music on his on his program. I think he can still preach. I've heard him preach recently. He's not a shadow of what he used to be. See, the thing is, for preachers or for any Christian, once you get in the known sin and uh, uh, you lose uh, you lose your mojo, you don't have what you used to have. And Jimmy Swaggart is not a shadow of what he used to be. He was probably at one time. Maybe the most influ uh, the influential, most influential TV preacher was Jimmy Swaggart years ago. Uh, uh, he fell from grace, and uh, uh, although uh, <laughs> he probably don't feel that way now, he used to preach on television when he was a big potatoes preacher. He, uh, uh, he, uh, uh, he used to rant and rave on there that you could lose your salvation. I bet you he didn't. I bet you he changed his mind on that when he got caught in a motel with the woman, huh? <laughs> I, be, I bet you Jimmy changed his mind on that one. <laughs> but anyway, bless his heart, uh, because by the way, uh, the Bible teaches once you're saved, you're always saved. This this uh, this this lordship salvation or this salvation that's attributed to the how you live. Listen, if salvation depending upon how you live, we'd all go to hell. We could never go to heaven. Salvation is by grace through faith. You understand that? That's what we teach here. So if you are saved, you ought to be part of a local church, not Jimmy Swaggart's church on television, or it used to be it's his son now or his grandson, I think, is even on that. Do you remember the guy on, remember the guy on television, Crystal Cathedral from California? What was his name? Anybody remember him? Had them pictures of that big crystal cathedral. It was in California. I forget which city in California. Anaheim? What was his name? I'm trying to think of it right now. It's been a long time. 
Well, he was a reincarnation of Norman Vincent Peale. He was a positive, uh, positive thinker preacher. Uh, uh, you know who? What was his name? And it started with an S. The guy in California, Schumann or Schuler? Or... Schuler. 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 Yeah, that's Schuler. him. Schuler. Schuler. Uh, you know who the new Schuler is today? Joel Olstein. Well, no, his grandson, but not to the... Uh, the, the, um, the big-time Norman Vincent Peale today is Joel Olstein out of Texas, Houston, Texas, I believe. He bought a basketball uh, auditorium there. And you see, any of you seen Joel Olstein on television? He's smiling out there. He just smiled like that all the time. <laughs> he said, oh, something good going to happen to you. Everything's positive. Just just think positively. Problem is, you might try to think positively, but you're going to have to face your sin, amen, and you're going to have to face God, and you're going to have to face the fires of hell if you don't deal with your sin. Joel Olstein, his daddy was a Baptist preacher, and was a hard, he was a preach like I preach. Joel Olstein's different. Uh, uh, that's how you can get 55,000 people in a, uh, uh, in a, he bought a basketball place there in Houston that's where his church is now he, he I think probably gets more money this was several years ago he was gathering 55 million um, from his uh, church there in Houston and gathering 45 million from suckers out here like you and I uh, and, and then he preached to, to you and tell you how much you say well I don't. We got some first timers here today. You say I don't like the way you preach. Well, I'm glad you're here. I get one shot at you anyway. You come here for the last time. That's okay. Go back to Joel Olstein and and uh, let him tickle your ears and take you to hell. I said, let him tickle your ears and take you to hell. That's you folks out there on Facebook too. But if you're a real Christian, you ought to belong. To phone off. Am I still live on here? I think so. Sorry about that, Facebook folks. Let me. Shut this thing off. Shut. Okay. I shut that off without shutting the live. Am I still on Facebook? I hope so. Phone rang in. I'm not a professional at this by far. Where was I? Joel Olstein. Huh? Olstein taking folks to hell. You love them. Positive thinking. Oh, my Lord. Watch out. Watch out. Reincarnation of Norman Vincent Peale. He was the original. Oh, he wasn't the original. That was in the Bible time. There always has been these positive thinking, folks. you got to face your sin. But it, uh, it's starting on here in the six, First Corinthians chapter 6. It's uh, uh, telling us that Christians ought to sue Christians. Take care of your matters in the church. Everybody had a, had, ought to have a local church. If you're not part of this local church, there's people here that if uh, there's a there's a, a booklet on the on the on the back table. Uh, Gary, go give me one of my booklets off the back table. Bring it to me. Uh, but we, we we have bylaws and constitution and and what we believe as a church and 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 what you need to practice as a church. And uh, in our bylaws and constitution, it says that uh, we don't take Christians to to, to court. We, uh, we we bring them that are here. Uh, uh, they're in our church. If you're in our church, we. And this is what it looks like. This is it. It says bylaws and constitution, uh, Ridgewood Avenue Baptist Church, and we're of course Daytona Rescue Mission. It's really one and the same thing. Uh, they're two separate organizations, but we we work together. Uh, so anyway, this. Uh, You're supposed to take care of your business in the church. Join the church. You say, well, I'm not, a, I'm not an independent Baptist like you. I don't want to use a King James Bible. Go find a church where you're comfortable and join it. I'm just telling you, we ain't the only church in town. But we, we know what we believe, and it's, it's, it's spelled out very clearly in our bylaws and constitution. But you're not supposed to sue people uh, 
uh, in the civil court, uh, I mean, uh, if you're dragged into court for crime, you're going to have to deal with that because uh, God has put uh, government, so you got to go to that. Don't, uh, you can't use this verse and say, uh, I'm not going to answer in a, in a criminal court. You've got to answer in a criminal court because God's given us the justice system. That comes out of the Bible, you understand. But Christians aren't supposed to sue each other. They're supposed to come to court. Uh, so that's very plain here. Um, it says, Do ye not know that the saint shall... Uh, do you not know the saints shall judge the world? How, what does that mean? I think that refers to the judgment seat of Christ. Not the judgment seat of Christ, I'm sorry. The judgment seat of Christ is just for saved people. We're all going to be judged by Jesus Christ himself. But this is talking about the great white throne judgment. It says, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? You'll be there. Of course, Jesus is the judge, but we'll be there at that white throne judgment, we that are saved. I believe we'll be visitors there. It says, and if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Well, uh, angels. Anybody know anything about angels? What's, a, uh, uh, what's an angel? Anybody know what an angel is? A messenger of God. Okay. Uh, yes, it is a messenger of God. In fact, that, that great angel with my namesake, Gabriel... He is actually the messenger angel, a special messenger angel, the angel Gabriel. That's me. And I, I like a fella. He's a friend of the mission. He loves his pastor a lot, and and uh, and and he. I'll have to show it to you. You can look it up on YouTube. He he prays. <laughs> and he just uh, he thinks his pastor is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, he he likes me a lot and and uh, uh, he supports the rescue mission and 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 he said uh, uh, I know why I know why pastor's name is Gabriel because he's an angel I tell <laughs> my wife says oh that's a bunch of baloney <laughs> we're not gonna talk now Bill I'm on Facebook I'm on well we ain't even gonna make a statement now I'm just talking. Uh, was you got uh, uh, now? If the statement you're going to make is you, I agree with him. You are an angel, but I'm not. Uh, you you don't think that well of me, so I, I'm not going. No, 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 no. Just be quiet. So I know I know you're not going to say you think I'm an angel. So I'm not going to let you talk now. If you're going to say I'm an angel, I'd let you say something. But anyway, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, we're going to rule as as the saints. Now that's when in not now, but when we're in heaven, we're going to be like Jesus. And did you know that the angels are jealous of you and I as saved people? The angels are jealous of us because they can't be a child of God. The angels, they always, uh, they were created to be ministering spirits, and that's all they'll ever be, ministering spirits. And so, uh, uh, and then it goes on in verse 4. Uh, if then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them the judge who are least esteemed in the church. Now that's a, that's interesting. A lot of times in the church, a pastor will uh, uh, appoint the rich people and the big shots, those that are in authority. Uh, they'll let them be the deacons and 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 uh, make decisions in the church. But uh, the Bible says here. Get the least esteemed in the church. Get the one that takes out the garbage and cleans the toilets. Get the humble one. Get the one that's the least in the church and let them make the judgment. Wow. God's sure different than the world, isn't he? Huh? The world, and I'm even talking about in born-again Christian churches, they get the big shots. They get the lawyers and, the, and uh, the bank presidents and the rich folks and this and that, and they let them make judgments in the church. When uh, the Bible says, forget about them big shot worldly people that are in, and that's okay, they could be in the church. That's, that's okay, they could be in the church. But it says, uh, get, the, uh, get the sidewalk sweepers and the dishwashers. And the ones that'll wipe the table, and the ones that'll vacuum the floor, let them be the judges. You say that's crazy. No, that's not crazy. It's Christian. 
You forget that the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God and the wisdom of God is foolishness with the world. Do you understand that? That's what it's telling us here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. This is the word of God. This isn't uh, worldly church. Verse 5. I speak to your shame. Shame on you going on and get the big shots that run that. I, I, that's why I don't... Uh, uh, I'm not going to even go there. I'm not going to go into that because I don't have time. i got to get back to the Bible. I speak to your shame. That's what it says in verse 5. Is it that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Christians are suing each other and going before the worldly court. You ought to do that. You ought to do that. There was a, the Southern Baptist, I'll name them by name. The Southern Baptist was suing this church. This used to be a Southern Baptist church. It's not. It's Independent Baptist Church now. The Southern Baptist Church was suing this church, and suing me personally as a pastor of this church, trying to steal our church building from us because this had been a Southern Baptist church for years. They took us to court. We went to the judge over here at the Justice Center and uh, Southern Baptist, they rich, they got all kinds of money. They got their own lawyers and everything. And uh, they, were, they were suing this poor little church and poor little preacher. And thank God for the CLA, Christian Law Association, Brother Gibbs. Brother Gibbs, a wonderful man. He's, he, uh, he's represented... Uh, a ch and represents today churches all over the country. He's represented me in many matters when there's been problems. And uh, he represented me, has all these years, pro bono. You know what pro bono means? He didn't charge me nothing. He just helps Christians. He helps people that are being abused. And the Southern Baptist Convention was trying to abuse our church and steal our church. I went to... And, and we went to the, they had a bunch of foolishness trumped up, and we went to the, uh, shame on you for doing that. Sullivan and the Southern Baptist Convention, I don't know if he's still the boss over there or not. He sent me a letter. He'll never beat the Southern Baptist Convention. We got money, we got power. Fooey on that baloney. I went to the judge over there, and, and we sat down, and we had our CLA lawyer, and they had their lawyers, several of them from the, Southern Baptist Convention, and uh, and the, the judge was, he looked at the trumped up charges and this and that, and he says, look, they do everything to what their bylaws say. They, they elected this pastor, and they made a decision, and they're out of the Southern Baptist Convention, and, and uh, he says, well, I don't care nothing about this. That's what the judge told him. Not over at the Justice Center. He says, if they didn't have a unanimous vote and voted Varga in and withdrew from the Southern Baptist Convention, he says, if, if Varga would have walked in the front door and came down to the front and says, I want to be your pastor, and they says, we want you to be my pastor, you're our pastor, it, the, the judge said, the judge, he says, so be it, I got nothing to do with that. He had, he had more sense than, than the Christians and the Southern Baptist Convention. Isn't that something? <laughs> and, of course, it finally went away. You know why it went away? Well, should, should I be saying this on Facebook? I will. A very, a very predominant person that's, that's a First Amendment lawyer for Christians. He's a predominant Southern Baptist. He don't believe in Christians. He don't believe in Christians. Uh suing Christians and I got a hold of him very influential very powerful man in the Southern Baptist Convention and I called him he was been my friend for years he represented me here in Daytona Beach and did work for me in Daytona Beach he's out of Orlando and uh, I called him I said I want I want to talk to this particular individual and and uh, well that's very very you know, he's, he's a big shot and uh who are you? I said, I'm his friend. Just tell him I want to talk to him. They said, well, this is highly irregular. This ain't highly irregular. I'm his friend. Well, what do you want to talk about? 
I says, you tell them Southern Baptist Convention is suing me in, this ch in our church, Ridgewood Avenue Baptist Church, and you don't believe in Christians suing Christians. Tell them to get off my back. And he did, and he got off my back. <laughs> because he's smart. He knows Christians shouldn't sue Christians, especially over foolishness and things that are ridiculous. Take care of your own business, Christians. Do it in the local church. Don't take each other to court. It's wrong. Now let's get on to the sermon. Verse 9. Know ye not that the un unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. You, uh, uh, you know what an effeminate person is? That's a homosexual. Effeminate in 1 Corinthians, I mean in Romans chapter 1, we looked at that a little while back here. It, uh, the uh, the Bible calls homosexuality in the New Testament vile affections. Men with men doing those things that are unseemly. Yeah. Uh, God, the Bible has a lot to say about the homosexual lifestyle, about uh, the queer behavior and the lesbian behavior, and it calls it vile affections. And, of course, here this effeminate behavior, that's what it is. Um, but we've we've made now that the uh, men can marry men and women can marry women. How sad! How messed up our I mentioned yesterday that our vice president, who I believe is a good man, I believe he's a Christian man, but he quoted Second um, uh, Chronicles seven fourteen. He said, "If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face." Now he 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 skipped these words and turned from their wicked way. America has turned from their wicked way or it can't be saved, you see. And it says, then I, I, I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. But, but, but he, for, he forgot about the verses about the uh, turn from their wicked way, you see. And that's what we need to do. Verse 10. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards. Hey, you drunkards in the audience. I know a few of you that are drunkards in the audience. I'm looking around here. There's one, there's one, there's one. I know some of you that are drunkards on a regular basis. Nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God because, you know, people that are getting drunk all the time, they ain't going to heaven. Whoa. You say, I see some frowns. I'll tell you one thing. If you are saved and you keep getting drunk, you ain't going to have much rewards in heaven. And you're probably not getting along so good now either. <laughs> you're not doing so good now either, huh? Am I telling the truth or not? Yeah, I'm telling the truth. And such were some of you. It talks about it in the past tense here in 1 Corinthians 6, like it talks about not only in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 6 but it talks about it in Ephesians 2 this is talking about our old life we used to be an adulterer we used to be a fornicator we used to be a drunkard we used to be covetous this is in the past life a Christian lives a new life and such were some of you but ye are washed are you washed in the blood in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Uh, ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. Anybody know? Anybody know what sanctified means? You always want to say something, set Bill. Apart. Set apart. That's what it means exactly. The word set uh, sanctified means set apart. I'm set apart. I'm set apart from the drunkenness. I used to sit down and get drunk, drink a whole case of beer at a time. I haven't had a bottle of beer since I've been saved. You think you're something? I don't think I'm something, but I know I'm, I'm set apart from alcohol. I used to smoke three and a half packs of cigarettes a day. I used to get up in the middle of the night and smoke a cigarette. Uh, you know what? I know one thing. I'm set apart from cigarettes. I haven't had a cigarette since I've been saved, April 4th, 1969. How about you, you, uh, you Christians that smoke like a chimney? If God wanted you to smoke, he'd have put a, uh, 
uh, he'd put a smokestack come out of the top of your head. <laughs> he didn't create you for that. By the way, I mention this often. Keep smoking. <laughs> because your tongue will rot out and there'll be cancer on your tongue and blah, blah, blah. And your cheek will be all messed up and you look like that from cancer uh, of the throat. And you won't be able to swallow. And you get lung cancer. And you that are smokers now, you've got black lungs that are going to get cancerous soon if they're not already. Yeah. Yeah. I've quit smoking all these years, 48 years. You know what? My my lung now is, is nice and white and pink and fleshly looking because God makes a body it can heal itself. And if you quit smoking like I did, it gets it gets healed. Oh my. Yeah. You're sanctified. But ye are justified. You know what the word justified means? Anybody know what justified means? I'm going to tell you the best, the best definition in the world for justified is this. Listen carefully now. The word justified means this in regards to Christianity and heaven and hell. Just as if I've never sinned. That's what it means. When you, when you see the word justified, it means this. Just as if I've never sinned. You're looking at me? I'm sinless. Glory to God. You say, oh, you're not. In reality, 1 John 1, 1.8 says, If you say that you have no sin, you lie, and the truth is not in you. And 1 John 1, 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I am... Uh, I said, Boy, that... The, devil's trying to cut this off it still says it's on here live i hope i am you still there i hope so it says uh i haven't finished yet and it says it's live so evidently it just had a spoof in there for a minute hopefully i'm still out i'm gonna keep preaching it says i'm live but anyway um so justified means just as if i've never sinned as far as heaven and hell goes and that's why, if I just as if I've never sinned, it means God doesn't see my sins anymore and they're all forgiven. Past, present, and future. It says all things, uh, all things are lawful unto me, verse 12. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any, any of these old sins. Meat for the belly, and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Did you see that body is not for fornication? All right, you understand that? Yeah, I had uh, I have people come in here every day. We've probably got some, uh, probably in a in a crowd this side. We've got a number of you that uh, are living in sin. Uh, you're living in an adulterous uh, or a fornicating relationship. Uh, you've uh, you've shared a bed with somebody last night that you're not married to that's a wicked sin that's what this bible is talking about today that's what we're uh what we're reading uh it says now the body is not for fornication uh but for the lord and the lord for the body and god hath both raised up the lord the resurrection of christ that's a cornerstone of the gospel and will also raise up us by his own power amen now you know, uh, and and you know not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ? Listen carefully now. And make them the members of a harlot. God forbid. What know ye not that he which is joined unto an harlot is one body? For two, saith he shall be one flesh. Now that's the holy bonds of matrimony. When it says two or one flesh, that's talking about the relationship of a man and woman to procreate and to have children and to have enjoyment. Sex is not just to procreate and have children, but it's for pleasure between a husband and wife. You understand? That's what the Bible says. And the Bible says a, a husband or a wife, we're not to defraud ourselves uh, from our mate. Uh, other than if we uh, stay apart for prayer and fasting. That's what the Bible teaches in another chapter of Scripture. 
It says what? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For he has say it shall be one flesh. That's for married folks. But he that is joined unto the Lord is of one spirit. You see, when we're joined to the Lord, this is making a special thing which we are, listen, sexual immorality is running rampant around the world and in America and probably in the people that are sitting in this church today and probably on many of you that are out there on Facebook. Sexual sin is prevalent. Am I telling the truth or not, church? I'm getting awful qu quiet in here. It's going wild. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you're involved in it. Keep that to yourself. But we've got to deal with it. This is the way the world is and wicked lost people. But Christians ought to live this way. You understand? We ain't supposed to live that way. Christians ought not to live in, 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 uh, in sexual sin. And by the way, uh, someone, uh, one of our members, that, uh, not a member, excuse me, not a member, but comes to this church. He, <laughs> he made the excuse because he didn't have intercourse that all of his other sexual activity wasn't sin. Well, that's a lie come out of hell. You see, you can... You can uh, have sexual activity that is an intercourse that is wrong and, and wicked and should be fleed from and be separated from by Christians. He claims to be a good Christian. And he says, oh, I'm involved with all this other kind of sex, but no intercourse. <laughs> they had a lot of these bless their heart and let me say something good I, I slapped the Southern Baptist Convention here a little ago let me say something good for the Southern Baptist Convention they started something with their teenagers that they were they were getting a promise ring that uh, uh, they would wear this promise ring as a teenager starting the Southern Baptist Convention in a good church and things like that and it's a good thought but these teenagers would make a pledge uh, uh, that they would not have uh, sex before marriage and uh, I know a lot of them that aren't Southern Baptists, but they're in different churches. They got that promise ring and they had it. But did you know what a lot of them, uh, you know what the devil did to a lot of those teenagers? Same, same baloney that this fella said. He said, well, out of these teenagers saying, well, I'm not having intercourse, but they have all kinds of other sexual activity. I mean, that, that's crazy. It's all included in this, in this fornication and adultery and illicit sex. You understand? So there's more to adultery and fornication than intercourse. There's other sexual activities, you see. So watch out, Christian. Verse 18, look at here now. Now this is pretty heavy stuff and, and we're getting into it out there on Facebook and here in church. Verse 18, flee fornication, flee sexual activity, flee all of your wicked thoughts, flee all your uh, wicked activities, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth, there's a lot of sin, is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God? And ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. That's the precious blood of Jesus. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God's. We're done, folks. Like I told you when I let you in today, church that is here, this is going to be a tough one today. This is kind of tough today, huh? Huh? Kind of down to earth. This is, this is the word of God, amen? I had made this up. This isn't the Varga doctrine. This is Christianity, you understand. Let's take it to heed. And let's flee fornication, amen, as Christians. Let's not live like the heathen. Let's not live like cats and dogs. And let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the truth. You shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. And I'm just teaching the Bible. We all need it. You say, our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed here in the church. You say, 
uh, I'm a saved person. You're here in the church. You say, I know I'm saved. I'm 100% sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. Would you slip your hand up? Let me see your hands. Amen. Amen. You may put your hands down. Thank you. Put your hands down. You say, I'm not sure I'm saved, Pastor. I need you to pray for me. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I need you to pray for me. Slip your hand up. Let me see your hand. Yes, yes, yes. We got several hands raised. God bless each one of you. There's a number of hands raised. Let me put your hands down. Lord, thank you for these. Dear one, the Holy Spirit has spoke to you and told you you're not saved. And I pray you'll be saved today. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now just before I pray for these that are here in the church, you are out there on the Facebook and on the Internet. You're not sure you're saved. You need to be forgiven. You need to repent. You can confess Christ. You can become like a little child and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. I know I can't see your hand, but raise your hand if you want me to pray for you. I can't see it, but God can see it. I'm going to pray for you now. Lord, for these that are here in the church and these that are out in the viewing audience that need to be saved, I pray that they'd see the simplicity of it and they see that it's not of them, but it's all of God. And all they have to do is repent and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And in simple childlike faith, call upon God. Repent and turn. Trust Christ. I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. Repeat it in your heart as I repeat it out loud. Repeat it in your heart as I repeat it out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross. And rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how. With an honest heart. I turn from my sins. Receive you. As my savior. Thank you for saving me. Right now. Here in the church audience. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. You say pastor. I didn't know I was saved. But I meant it in my heart. And I prayed it. And asked Jesus to save me today. And I meant it. Would you slip your hand up. Just slip it up. Say I did it today. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for these that have trusted Christ in our audience in church today. And you that are out there in the viewing audience, I pray for you that you've prayed the prayer. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing. I'm so glad that you've trusted Christ today. Would you uh, please let me know. Contact me somehow via the email or Facebook or texting or call or whatever. God bless you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you now for this chapter from the Word of God. Help us now to go forward for Thee and live for Thee. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.